Welcome to chapter 13. This chapter we're going to talk about cropping systems. So here are just uh, some five different uh, main points that we're going to look at. We'll talk about continuous cropping versus crop rotation, what the difference is between those, mono monoculture versus polyculture, multiple cropping systems. So we'll look at like a corn soybean rotation, um, an oat rotation. We'll look at agroforestry forestry con or cropping systems and then conservation planting as well. So some key concepts, what, we, what we're going to talk about this mini lecture is the difference between continuous cropping and crop rotation and how they're two different type of systems. We'll look at crop rotation and the really, really awesome advantage, the advantages that it gives producers. We'll talk about <clears throat> the monoculture versus polyculture and how you can grow two or one or many different types of, of crops in one, one field at one time. And then we're going to look at the CRP program that provides um, some really cool benefits for farmers to use soil conservation. So cropping systems. This just helps that producer enable the management uh, of crops efficiently and use the different variables like climatic variables and soil resources that they have um, to, their, to their best interest and, and to their best ability. So what does it kind of give us? A huge diversity of, of biodiversity. So it's going to be able to give us a richness or a number of species of um, that, that, main, <clears throat> that main plant. It's going give, to give us an evenness, evenness um, distribution among the entire field. So it's going to be able to grow many different types of, of, of those species, but at an even number. And then the biodiversity, so the macro and micro organisms that are living in that system, whether it's an agroecosystem or an ecosystem, is, are very, very important. So differences between continuous and crop rotation. Continuous is growing the same crop in the same field for two or years or longer. And um, there are some crops that are used for this and it has really good uh, money incentives. So you're, you're able to make a little bit more money um, in some cases, in some, in some crops there, but there's much more that goes into it, much more um, uh, specialization that, that will go into the, the management part and the growing part of that, that crop. And we'll, we'll talk about those uh, this chapter too. So crop rotation, that's just the sequence of, of different crops that are grown year uh, over years in the same land. And that might vary in the diversity of those crops, in the length that it's grown, uh, in the, the different hybrids or varieties that we have within those crops. So that's a uh, that's pretty pretty easy to to define once once we'll go through some of them to to show you. So <clears throat> this is a continuous cropping versus crop rotation. This is just a an image for you to see. So on the the very left hand side, you can see corn, 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 corn four times. So that's just planting continuous corn in the same field for four four growing periods or four years. A corn soybean rotation would be corn growing corn one year, soybeans the second year, corn the second year or the third year, excuse me, and then soybeans the fourth year, and then there's a corn soybean alfalfa alfalfa rotation that's used for different types of uh, farms like like uh, dairy farms. So they'll they'll grow corn one year one, soybeans year two, alfalfa year three, and year four. So this is a, a corn soybean rotation. So this is a two-year two year rotation. We see this a lot more in the Midwest than we do in any part of the, the country in the United States. We do it for a couple reasons. One being that these two crops, corn and soybeans, are pretty high value. So many, many countries throughout the world buy our corn and soybeans, which is really good for farmers and ranchers. But, um, you know, if there's some sort of, of natural disaster or if uh, the market kind of plummets, then, then that could be uh, pretty pretty intense um, when it comes harvest time or comes storage time. So we can actually cover these crops by a price support program through the farm bill. We're actually getting a new farm bill that just passed as I'm doing this lecture. Um, it passed yesterday. Uh, this is, <laughs> we're, at, we're at the end of June now. So passed yesterday through the Senate. So we actually have a 2018 farm bill and those, those programs will, um, still keep going, but um, they, they, do cons they, they do give greater uh, risk for soil erosion and, so and, and pests as well. So the management for these two crops are, are pretty intense and, uh, you know, scouting these crops, especially in those early parts of the, of the growing season, is pretty important. 
So now let's look at the O oh, alfalfa, alfalfa, alfalfa corn, and, so, and then soybean uh, in the fifth year. This is a five-year rotation. We look at this for more of more of like a you're using the grain, you're using the straw for livestock feeding and and uh, bedding. So this is this is more towards those those dairy farms in the northern part of the United States. A lot of farmer, a lot of dairy farmers to set offset cost of feed and and bedding will do this. So um, very very huge when you're talking about nitrogen because it just self it's very self-sufficient so very little fertilizer has to be thrown on there and that uh, crop gives a break in in some good weed or some very invasive weed cycles which is awesome so a sugar beet soybean or a dry bean um, also then wheat or corn you can do a wheat or corn uh, this is a three-year rotation this is more seen in the western part of the united states so colorado um, you know those those different climates you can see especially where sugar beets are grown so um, sugar beet, beet is going to be your cash crop uh, depending uh, on the year with soybeans uh, but this is designed to uh, reduce some disease so like root rot uh, you're not going to see much of that if you use this rotation and then you can play around with the the wheat or corn just depending on how um how that wheat or corn will grow at the the in the climatic variables that you have all right so now here's a oat red or a red clover um or alfalfa then a corn soybean three row three year rotation this is <clears throat> um Sometimes it's modified because of the corn soybean uh, rotation because um, that produces the the you're able to plow down those legumes for nitrogen for that corn crop of those oats or that red clover or alfalfa you're able to to use that as kind of a green manure crop to just input nitrogen and, and a lot of organic growers will do this too uh, they'll wait till that um, that oat or red clover or, or alfalfa will be um, right before it matures and then plow it under. And then following that harvest of, of whatever that oat or red clover, um, then they will put in the, the corn or the soybean um, rotation. And then <clears throat> they will also use that corn or soybean for their livestock uh, as well. This is one of my favorites to talk about. This is a potato soybean wheat rotation. This is a three year rotation just because I've uh, never got to grow potatoes, but this seems pretty cool. So this is more in, in the Midwest uh, part of the Western part of the United States and Idaho, um, depending on what the market uh, looks like with potatoes and, and soybeans, that's going to decipher what one of those is going to be your, your cash crop. And then um, after that wheat, um, if that wheat doesn't work out, which sometimes it doesn't because of the weather, it can then be replaced with uh, field or sweet corn. And that also depends on, uh, you know, kind of the, the social aspect or the, the people that are around that area that you're growing. And, um, you know, if sweet corn's a, a high cash crop for, for those different types of areas, it might be, <laughs> might be advantageous to do that. So here's the next one is a winter wheat grain sorghum and then following and we'll talk about following in just a little bit. This is more in the central Great Plains um, where there is too dry for um, uninterrupted annual cropping and then following then will help that pres help preserve some soil moisture and will control those weeds a little bit better and then help to maximize the yield of that wheat crop, which uh, we've seen um, especially in 2018 that that wheat price kind of uh, skyrocket for our, for the young farmers in the United States really have never seen it um, this this high so uh, when when we're on some sort of rotation like this it's pretty can, can be pretty pretty good for your pocketbook so a wheat follow um, this is more this is used more in semi-arid regions and more of the wet, the northern part of the United States like Washington and Montana um, we use this for winter or spring wheat um, or and spring wheat uh, production and this is where we when we're when we're looking at market um, if we're if we don't follow that um, that wheat then or if we want to follow that wheat peas can actually do that you can actually plant peas and um, if that if that market is where it should be and you're going to be able to to reach above your break even so following so 
this is important this is an important management aspect for hilly areas um, especially those hilly areas that have uh, a pretty deep slope so all it is is keeping one half of that hillside um, keeping the the um, residue from that crop half of it um, will be still of that crop and then the other half half is planted with a new crop um, that just helps stop uh, erosion that helps uh, keep moisture in there it helps keep the soil temperature down and um, then it's just rotated each season that's what following means